restoration. Okay. The first one, if there is, this is Piro's classification, class one. If there is, if there are all the walls intact, if you are doing intentional root canal, or if there is a non-vital tooth because of trauma, then if all the walls are intact around the access opening, just a composite restoration is fine. If it is an anterior tooth. All right. If it is an anterior tooth, just the composite restoration is fine. If it is a posterior tooth, again you have to reevaluate based on the occlusal forces, how much occlusal forces uh, shape or the position of the tooth in the arch, whether it is going for an FPD, all these things you need to reevaluate. Okay. Then you have class 2 and class 3. If 2 or 3 walls are remaining, you just go ahead, do a composite restoration as a core. And how many of you are doing uh, what type of what which is your favorite core material? Amalgam. Sarmet. Miracle mix you mean. Gla uh, glass sarmet. Okay. Then anybody else? Composite. 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 In all cases you use composite? Most of the cases you use composite. Nobody uses GAC? Yes, see? Uh, who uses uh, uh, cavit as a core and then go uh, for the crown? <laughs> I know few people do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Cavity is not a core. So you need to the core materials will range from your GIC, resin modified GIC, miracle mix, composite, amalgam. My favorite is amalgam as a core. I'll tell you when I talk about, uh, briefly I'll tell you how to select a core. But composite or amalgam is the core material of choice. But I know everybody uses comp uh, GIC. Many people use GIC as a core because of convenience. All right. So you just do a composite core and go ahead and do a place an onlay or a crown. If it is a class one and class two and class three. If it is class four, there is only one wall is missing. Then post is required. Okay. If there is only one wall is missing, then you have to place a post. Which post? That we will tell you. You have to mostly fiber post. If you have 2 mm of coronal or crown structure above the free gingival margin. If you have 2 mm. Alright? That is like this. So if you have to do a fiber post, if one wall is missing, if one wall is remaining, do a fiber post or a metal post, then only when you see a tooth with one wall remaining, think about doing a post. All right. So your uh, inclination for a post will start from class 4. All right. So uh, 1, 2 and 3 will only require a core and a crown. If it is a anterior tooth, it requires only a core. If it is a posterior tooth, then it requires only a core and a crown. Clear? Right. If you people need a break, we can break and then continue. But I'll continue. In between, nothing should. Then we have class 5, the most difficult uh, teeth to restore where we don't have any tooth walls remaining around the axis cavity. If you don't have any tooth remaining around the axis cavity, whether it is an anterior tooth, whether it is a premolar or a molar, then you have to place a post. It's compulsory. And if it is a and it has to be a very rigid post. In such cases, 
we cannot do a fiber post we cannot do a metal post which post we have to do cast post how many of you have done cast post here sir has done you have to do if you have to pass <laughs> so it's a exam exercise for endo so you have to do cast post so based on this there was it's a very landmark study conducted in the year 1984 all right by sorensen it's a retrospective study see uh, please pay attention for this study a uh, lot of things will get cleared with this uh, it's a retrospective study where they followed teeth a uh, 1273 endodontically treated teeth were followed retrospectively which were treated 25 years back to one year back okay so you are getting the point so this is a retrospective study where they followed followed it for it's a 25 year study so they went uh, means teeth which were treated 25 years back till one year okay so which in which were all were endodontically treated teeth and all had crowns and those which did not have crowns also so they did a study based on this they compared the endodontically treated teeth so this study does not compare vital teeth and non vital teeth it, it is comparing on all endodontically treated teeth so you should know why this study is important so compared with crowns and without crowns and what is the inference they got it anterior teeth they showed no difference in the success whether crown is there or not all right anterior teeth did not show any difference in the success rate of endodontically treated teeth whether crown was present or not whereas posterior teeth performed better with crowns so the failure rate for posterior teeth without crowns increased clear so it's a landmark study which will tell you whether because uh, most of us we always uh, try to do crowns for all the teeth whether it is anterior or posterior isn't it so some of the teeth might not require a crown just a composite restoration might help if it is an anterior tooth and some of the teeth where there is where the uh, suppose the patient is i'll just give you an example clinical uh, scenario patient is a denture wearer upper is a denture wearer and lower he is having uh, natural teeth and you have done root canals for premolars will you place a uh, crown if all the three walls are intact will you place a crown no need not required isn't it so over treatment should be avoided so this study will give us an insight on how to not over treat so how to not give crowns for all the endodontically treated teeth so anterior teeth you are going to give crowns only if there is i'll come to that there is a excellent uh, demonstration for that anterior teeth you are going to give uh, crowns only if only for aesthetic reasons if it is discolored provided it has all the uh, whether singulum is intact marginal ridges in i'll come to that okay so this is a very landmark study which you need to keep it in mind now so if you get a crown if you get a tooth which is which is having intact marginal ridge intact singulum and incisal edge and it is aesthetically acceptable just do a conservative composite build up all right if you have a if you have a have a, a moderate coronal damage that is one or two large proximal lesions and average size tooth then you just go ahead and place a crown okay which our crown and if you see that there is significant marginal ridges uh, broken down incisal ridge gone 
and coronal fracture is statically unacceptable, then you will have to make either a custom made or a prefabricated post and then go ahead with a crown. If it is a posterior tooth, then if it is minimal, your treatment would be, if it is minimal risk, low risk fracture and minimal occlusal forces, intact buccal and lingual cusps, then conservative treatment, that is just an MOD, onlay can be done. Post is not required for such teeth. Okay. See, these are the guidelines which you need to uh, follow when you start from tomorrow, when you are going to practice. Uh, sit and take, it takes only 2 minutes. What restoration, what core, whether I need to place a post or not. It takes only 2 minutes to decide. Okay. Sometimes you might have to uh, decide based on, uh, after removing the whole caries, you might have to decide how much of, uh, what restoration and what core you need to place. Okay. If it is a moderate coronal damage, then there is then the minimum of one or sound cusps. Then you need to do an amalgam or a resin composite core with a crown, all right? And if it is a significant damage, then you have to decide which post you will do, and you have to decide which uh, core you are going to place. Mostly posts are required in such cases. Now, by now, you all will be knowing what are the components of interradicular restoration. I'll just go through fast. One is a double or a post. Both are interchanged, uh, used interchangeably. Then you have a core and a coronal restoration. So, what is a double? Double is something. It's a rigid material which is placed interradicularly. Okay, it can be wood from that time to the posts which we use now. So, double. Primarily, they. Uh, I would like to ask one, or probably I would like to do a survey. How many of you think that posts strengthen the teeth? Lift your hands. One, two. Please be open about it. How many of you think when we pl place a post? Because I've heard many people saying to the patient that when we we have to strengthen the tooth by placing a post pin hak <laughs> you will say isn't it so how many of you think when you say this to the patient that actually post strengthen the teeth how many of you think I got only two answers hmm? only aids in retention it increases the surface area for the core core not crown so nobody thinks that posts strengthen the teeth fiber posts do they strengthen the tooth so none of the posts they strengthen the teeth How many of you don't know? So the answer is huh? So answer is post do not strengthen the teeth they only retain the core alright so post never they do in fact they weaken the roots they weaken the teeth okay Okay, okay, Nadim. So uh, there was a, a study done um, in US where they did a survey like this, and I think same like this, uh, no, not like this. Uh, our audience is very well, uh, uh, well-read audience we have. Uh, the survey in US which was done. Uh, around 60% of the general practitioners thought that post strengthen the teeth. So uh, I am happy. So the post, the main function of the post is to retain the core. All right. So I'll come to that uh, during the last part of the lecture. We will have a uh, slight contradiction. I'll come to that. Then what is a core? 
core replaces the lost dentine the core it replaces the lost dentine it can be metal it can be composite gic it can be uh, any uh, any core which we use all right so now what are the indications for post so extensive loss of tooth structure if you find teeth like this pull it out and go for implant why not hmm you can easily save these teeth please don't pull it out okay you can easily because you've got good amount of tooth structure from the free gingival margin so you have good amount of tooth structure so please do not advise extraction and go, if even if the patient is affording even if the patient says no no pull it out and go for any blood because we get lot of google patients so success rate compared to uh, the tooth which is having full tooth yes it decreases because it depends again on the type of uh, core and all that then if it is being used as a bridge then it is probably better to put a post and uh, then restore it i think uh, most of you de don't know this uh, that if you are going to change the angulation of the tooth for more than 1 mm then you can use a cast post if you want to change the angulation if you have one one tooth which is proclined or you have multiple teeth which are uh, in forwardly placed position then you can actually do the re retroclination and do the post so in such cases only cast post is indicated you cannot do that with a fiber post and core okay so one of the uh, biggest advantages of doing a cast post is you can see that angulation so this is how it is you can actually take it back right and teeth that are going to be used for periodontal splint now contraindications if it is not much of a damage why would you do a post then endodontically which is questionable prognosis teeth having minimal uh, canal dentine that is if it is a open apex case blunderbuss canal or young patient where the where the roots are very thin not at formed then you wouldn't have you wouldn't think of doing a uh, post then teeth having unusual if it is curved canal s shaped canal you cannot do or you cannot place a post in such cases persistent periapical infection and uh, periodontally weak teeth poor crown root ratio as well as teeth with heavy occlusal contacts we'll break we'll have a 10 minutes break and then we'll reassemble yeah we'll have a 10 minutes break not more than that because we are running out of time i think his presentation has been crisp and clear smooth as silk uh i think tea coffee milk is available i think i have a small uh, uh quiz here uh manan uh, can you spell out silk for me please uh so what do cows drink milk okay fine so you're not concentrating on the lecture <laughs> cows drink water not milk <laughs> <laughs> so concentrate okay we'll break okay fine which will determine which post we need to choose all right because we have an array of options and uh, right from the beginning right from the cast post to fiber post to uh, prefabricated in prefabricated we have metal and so we need to know which 
post and what are the factors which determine so the 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 primary factor which will uh, dictate the primary factor which will dictate uh, which post we are going to select is the amount of remaining two structure like we have discussed previously like we have discussed previously how much true structure is present and uh, that will dictate your post uh, selection then the anatomic position whether it is a anterior tooth or a posterior tooth whether it is in an aesthetic zone or it is in a uh, non aesthetic zone uh, so you need to uh, evaluate that also the functional load whether the patient is a bruxer whether the patient is uh, uh, having uh, only one side arch teeth and he is uh, all these other factors and the canal shape how the canal shape is whether it is conical or an elliptical shape if it is an anterior tooth it will be a uh, conical shape uh, that is the anterior teeth and if it is a premolar then it will be an elliptical shape so what type of post will exactly suit that tooth is uh, the criteria then aesthetic requirements we'll come to that then moving ahead with the principles of preparation of endodontically 